Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Road to Grandmaster series. Uh, in this series, I'm taking you through the behind the scenes as well as uh, my tournaments that I'm playing to achieve the Grandmaster title uh, and uh, improve a chess, improve as a person, improve my well-being, my emotional, my mental health, my physical health, all that good stuff. Okay, uh, it's 11 o'clock at night, so please disregard. I don't have my usual lights on. Uh, we've got a whole rack of clothes here because we're moving stuff and we're getting a closet renovated. I'm drinking an enormous Diet Coke because um, McDonald's is not necessarily the beacon of healthy food, but sometimes you need to prioritize happiness, and it sometimes makes me happy to eat a little McDonald's. I'm very tired. So uh, I'm playing in a tournament right now here in New York City. Uh, this is the second round out of nine, and uh, I won my first round. Friendly reminder... I'm uploading a bunch of things to the Patreon uh, and uh, like my behind the scenes thoughts and so on. Okay, so in this game, my opponent is named Logan Brain. First of all, this is cheating. How am I supposed to beat a guy whose last name is literally Brain? Ridiculous, not fair. Second of all, I know Logan. Uh, Logan, I think is still teaching chess. He has a bunch of students. Uh, he was teaching chess when I was teaching chess, you know, pre-pandemic. Nobody even played chess. Like, a, a grand total of, like, 13 or, for like, 14 people played chess before 2019. Uh, but he's uh, he's got a, a whole bunch of stuff going on there. And uh, recently, he's been playing a lot more tournaments. And I didn't know much about him other than the fact that he played the Grunfeld defense. So the Grunfeld defense goes d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight g3, d5. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure he was going to play this because he had, like, no games in the database. Um, so I, I prepared something for the Grunfeld. And, you know, like, I, I didn't want to test out anything else. So I, I decided, okay, like, let you know, if he plays the Grunfeld, he plays the Grunfeld. If he plays something else, he plays something else. d5. And I prepared this line that there are, like, a million lines of the Grunfeld defense. Actually, on the Road to GM series, I, I had a game against uh, Robert Perez, where I played knight f3, c5, h3, which is a, which is a thing. Um, but I played this, and I prepared this line because I figured there was absolutely no way he was going to see this coming. This is also, like, an extremely rare move. Uh, and, uh, I thought, okay, let's, like, play. You know, we'll figure it out. Um, I've been playing this in some secret online games. And, uh, he castled. I played bishop c4. And, and now, basically, black can choose between taking on c3 and going to b6. So, I figured this was a very easy opening for me to study because he only has really two lines. He took. I took. He played c5, undermining my center. I castled. And Gukesh here has had some games, so I was learning from Gukesh. Uh, and in a nutshell, white plays queen e2, bishop a3, puts the rook on c1 or d1, and essentially waits for black to develop and then launches a kingside attack. So, generally black plays queen c7, b6, bishop b7, knight c6. One, two, three, four. Now, when I was sitting at the board, I actually thought Logan did this the wrong way. I actually thought he let me go e4. Now, what I, what I mean by that is, normally black plays, let's say, knight c6. You can't really play e4 because you're going to lose the pawn. So you play queen e2, and then and only then does black start, because you still cannot go e4. But Logan never played knight c6. So I was sitting at the board, right? And the thing about high-level preparation, like at the 2348 level, I could be higher, but we're not going to get into that right now is you try to understand why certain moves get made. And, and I was understanding that I think this is the right idea. However, there was one thing that was stopping me from playing this move. And it was the fact that despite him playing b6 with the clear intention of playing bishop b7, he actually can go here instead. Because the thing is, I need to give him information, right? So now I'm giving him the information, I'm playing this setup, now he's going to switch it up. And I didn't see a good response after he plays like this. And this is very typical Grunfeld-style play. You just put a lot of pressure on white center. I thought about e5. I wasn't convinced. I thought about, like, rook c1, rook d. I wasn't convinced. It, maybe I could have played it, but I, I opted to play the setup that I know, which is here. Rook d1. So rook c1, Gukesh has played like this twice. Rook d1, knight c6. 
And like I said, as you can tell from my time here, yes, I spent a little bit of time and everything, because, mostly because I was thinking about the, the E4 plan. This is all my prep. So before the game, I had this position, like I, I knew this position, and I, I was trying to dig into the intricacies of where he's supposed to put his rooks. And he put them perfectly. He, he, he played exactly as he's supposed to. He put the rook on c8, and the idea is to hit my bishop. Uh, and so I got out of the way, right, and, and I took my, my eye off of this. And then he put the rook here, and I was actually, at this point I was getting really annoyed. Because Logan is a, I think he's like 30. I don't know how old he is, but I think he's, I think he's like in his 30s. And he's rated 21, 35. And look, I'm old in chess terms. I was, I used to be higher rated, right? Logan's even older than me. He's 2130. So like at some point, right, traditional wisdom tells you, and I don't, I really, I, I'm not like, this is not, I mean, I'm just saying at a certain point, you start playing silly moves, both of us, especially him because I'm in prep. So I know all the moves. So I'm sitting there going, well, he's 2130. He's not 2531, right? Like he's 2135. And I'm thinking, He's going to do, he's going to maybe malfunction at some point. No, he, he played all the best moves. And the thing about having preparation is that, like, if your opponents play all the best moves, it's just going to be equal. So knight g5. And so here in my notes was h6, right? Because obviously I'm playing here. I'm provoking a weakness. I'm trying to go h5. So, like, just so you understand, like, the idea is h5 and f4. It's to start the kingside attack. So in my notes, I had, you know, h6. And then, obviously, I bring the knight back to the center. That was the point, to put pressure on this pawn. If he takes, I have a very solid center. I get the open C file. I take care of my one weakness. And there's some really interesting lines from here. And he went E6. Which was not in my notes. Which is a logical move. Because, I mean, at some point, your prep has to stop, right? And I'm sitting there like, well, if he goes H6, I know I put my knight here. Should I put my knight here anyway? I rejected it because I was like, what's my idea? My idea is to put pressure on this, right? But what if he plays like 97? I mean, I'm not really going to take, right? He, he, he immediately starts putting a lot of pressure. He has this. He has this. I, I even thought he could play like rook d5, potentially preventing me from, from pushing the pawn. I mean, I was really confused. So then I thought, well, the idea has to be h5, right? I mean, I, I have to go h5. It's what I ended up playing, but I was calculating all sorts of crazy... I was calculating this! And here I was going to play f4. And then if he went here, I was going to sack my knight. And then I was going to go here. And the point is that now the rook is going to open up. Like, I, I, I... And this is winning, as you can see for me. So I was calculating accurately, but I still was like, this is a, because he doesn't have to do anything. And then he just went here anyway. Now... I did think I was playing the position correctly, so I, I, I wasn't like, what am I doing? You know, I, I thought, okay, this seems correct. I'm not going to go e4 because that undermines my center. I'm going to go queen g4 and threaten various infiltrations because that seems to be the point of the opening, right? I prepare something, and I'm trying to un understand why I prepared anything. So I play queen g4. He plays knight f5. Now, at this point... I play the second best move. So I play queen h3. Threatening queen h7. Now, what I thought here was actually, my first instinct was, what if I take the knight? Now, I rejected this because I thought it was really, like, I just thought this was stupid. I was like, I'm, there's no checkmate. So why would I give up my light squared bishop when four out of my six remaining pawns are on the wrong color? And yes, I understand, like, if he takes and hangs mate in one, I win the game. But his last name is literally Brain. He's not going to do that. I was like, H how is this even? Well, it turns out that this position is just really good. Yeah, it just turns out that, like, even though he can threaten mate, I play f3, and I'm just better. I have, I have no idea how. I, I, I really, I don't understand. I, like, I... You know, he can play queen e7, rook e1, and it, computer's like it's plus one. I mean, I, I, I don't get it. I think the computer just wants to play e4, basically. It just wants to go straight down the middle, which... I, I just need more experience, I guess, in these positions. I mean, I did think about bishop f5, but I just thought, well, there's no mate, and I lose the bishop. It seems so stupid to take on f5. Why would I... Apparently it's not. Apparently it's not. Fascinating.
So I went queen h3, and he played what I thought was a good move. He went queen e7. I was not expecting queen e7. I was expecting knight h6, at which point I was probably just going to play like... To be honest, I'm, I'm not even sure. I might, might have rotated back to the center, because again, thinking about that idea. Uh, I was also thinking maybe to play like f4, I thought was a, pr was a pretty sensible move. Again, I know I'm supposed to kind of attack. So I went queen h3, and he went queen e7. I was like, really? I realized right away it's a very good move. The point is, I can defend my knight with my pawn, which I know I want to do. But I was like, but this is so weak. Like, now I can't even go to h7 because I'm going to lose this pawn. Not to mention the fact that, like, it's not going to happen now, but there are... P for example, for example, for example, just very... I mean, obviously I would take the queen, but there's traps like this. And I understand my queen is hanging, but I'm just saying, I was like, why would I move my f pawn now? You know, why, like, why would I... I feel like there's a lot of tactics. Well, it turns out f4 was the best move after, after queen e7. Not only was it the best move, here I thought it was really clever because I was like, I'm going to check him. Put his king on the same diagonal as the, as the... This just seems right, right? It just seems like I should prevent him from moving at all. And then I'll retreat. And then, you know, I'm, put, I'm putting some pressure on c5. Yeah, the engine says f4 now, idiot. That's the only way you can be better. Of all the things in the game where I could have gotten a better position, bishop f5 it is way more human than in this position playing pawn to f4, hanging not just a pawn, but also a fork. The move f4 didn't even cross my mind. I, I mean, I, like, it, what? <laughs> Basically, you sack the bishop. If they take, you play bishop f7 and threaten mate. And if they go here, now this is weak. And this, and to be honest, you know, I guess I, this is just a tactical pattern I just got to think about. I got to occasionally consider the impossible moves, and I, and I just didn't. I was like, my knight is hanging, I forced the king this way, and a move that he, he played a move here, which I, I, I didn't quite appreciate the power of until he played it. He has a lot of moves here, the position's very complicated. I'm trying to put pressure here. In a nutshell, I'm looking for tactics. For example, take, take, like I'm, I'm always calculating like knight takes c5, point being, you know, he, he's under a lot of pressure here. I take, now this is hit, this is hit, and the second the king has to move, he's going to lose his bishop. So I'm calculating all these different lines. And then he plays this move, knight h6. Now I saw this move from a distance. Some of you may remember my first round game. If you haven't watched my first round game, go watch it. If you're watching this like years in the future uh, as well. In the first game of this tournament, I got my queen trapped in my opponent's position, and here I was like, what am I doing? Why am I not respecting the queen? Like, I, I, every game I'm playing, my queen is just getting locked behind. But I, I was like, okay, look, he has only one way to trap my queen, and it's by bringing his rook, and that's just not possible. So he's going to move his pawn and his king, and then this? I don't think so. He's going to move his queen, then his king, and then his king, and then I don't think so. But it's something that's there, and I kind of got to respect it. Now... At this point, I thought about pawn takes, but it didn't seem correct. One cool line here is if he goes for a tactic, which uh, threatens my, you know, try trying to win my, my knight. Uh, I, I have a very nice in-between move, hitting his queen, sacking my bishop. But the point is, two rooks are now hanging. So I'm threatening to take, and this is completely lost. Now, here I thought for a long time. I considered the top move of the engine, which is knight g3, but here's a bigger problem in the position. If I don't do anything right now, like if I don't play concretely, he is going to go e5. Let's say I just play a random move. He is going to play, first of all, he's also going to play f5. So he's going to try to go for that plan that traps my queen, but he's also going to go e5. Like at a certain point, he's going to start calling the shots. So I thought I came up with a really smart plan, which is this move f3. Now the engine says it's fine, F3 had a, had a very concrete idea. The idea of pawn to F3 was that my knight is protected if I ever move the bishop. So the, the kind of point was that after take, take, I have like, you know, I can, I can move the bishop out of the way and then there's tricks. Uh, d please disregard. I'm just showing you like the, the kind of like the idea. A second idea I had with this move was actually kind of hilarious. I kind of wanted to play king F2. It almost never works because of some very concrete reasons, but I was like, ooh, I'm going to sneak, you know, and, and then I just thought maybe it's a creative move that keeps the tension, and 
He's gonna try to trap my queen another way, which is bananas. Here he found a plan which coach Nick Sons, you guys know my coach, he literally texted me after this game and said, my jaw dropped when I saw him play this move. He went rook d he, he, against this, he went rook d5. I expected rook d5. It's a very nice idea. He's trying to trap my queen from the other side. It's actually very brilliant. But my response was also really creative. I played f3 to go g4 to stop rook h5, and, and actually, he's in a little trouble. He's in a little trouble if he's not careful. For example, let's say he just plays an absent-minded move. Remember my plan of king f2? And now it's good. Now it's good, and, I, and I'm stopping him from getting it. So I thought, I was like, I'm playing really creatively. I gotta give myself a little bit of credit. Like, I, I, I thought f3, g4 was super smart, and then he went here. Now, at first glance, this move looked so stupid. And I was like, Logan Brain, this move's got no brains behind it at all. What? Like, why would you, you just put the rook, it's like you wasted a move. Well, here's the fascinating thing. Rooks go backwards. Pawns do not. He goes rook up, induces a super committal and super weakening move, and pieces out, and I can't. And now I'm left with the mess that I made, which I thought was not a mess. My original intention here was to be very simple. I was going to play like bishop c2. And the point of bishop c2 is again, where does he move? Let's say he does nothing. I'm going to take. That's what I thought. He's going to take. And then I'm bulldozing. I have knight c5. Same idea, same kind of concept that I told you. So I thought, oh, well, then he's going to go here, here, take. Equal position. Apparently not. Apparently I'm worse. So that was why I... And then I was like, wait a minute. Oh my god. He's going to take my knight. Now that move doesn't even... That knight has been there for several moves. I played knight e4 ages ago. He was never going to take this knight. Why on earth would he do that? He just gives me the bishop. I mean, his bishop is so strong. It's going to see the whole board. The point is, the point is, he induced these moves. And now he's threatening to take. And the reason why this is so strong is because he's then going to play f5 with a tempo and when i go back or take and go back my queen dies and i sat there and was like am i gonna lose oh my god who am i playing rook d5 rook d8 i was like 21 35 this dude is like at least 100 points underrated and he has been working on his chess he's been playing a lot he's been studying I mean, it just goes to show you, ELO means nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. The guy I lost to in the first... Uh, the, lost to. The guy I, 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 I beat in the first round uh, lost to an 1800, like a tournament ago. Danila. He lost to an 1880-rated player a tournament ago. In the second round of this event, while I was battling Logan, he beat Grandmaster Novik, rated 2400. It just goes to show you, like, ELO is, is all over the place. I'm sitting there like... Dude, what is happening? What? And, and here I went down to nine minutes because I, I didn't see how to combat this. I thought about moving my knight, but then he plays e5. And the engine is like, you're fine, stupid. But So I played rook d2, and rook d2 had a trap. I was setting a trap. If he takes and takes and plays f5, I respond by moving my rook over here with a very nice idea. Queen g6, pawn takes e4. Rook h2. This is a crazy move. You lose a full bishop. Notice I took a pawn. I, and now I don't go here. Because then he, then he runs to safety. Or so I thought. But I play rook to h2. And I'm threatening to open up with 19 points of material barreling down toward him. And I'm actually, I'm actually in good shape. So I took on e4. And my point was, if he plays f5, he's going to run into problems. But he went queen g5. So, for the first time in this game, I play a move and I get officially a worse position. Now, if you ever watch a live stream of any of my tournament games where I, I have the camera and I have... The chat is rabid. Rabid. It's like football fans. I mean, it, it's... You play a move, the computer it says it's minus one, minus point nine. 
They all panic. They think you've lost everything. The point is, he's attacking this, but he's also threatening f5, right? But he's not threatening f5. He's not threatening f5 because if he plays f5, I play f4, which is crazy. I did not see this. And then if he takes, I block. I'm counterattacking his queen while my bishop is hanging. Now, I saw the idea f4, rook g2, which is why I played that during the game. I just thought... He's going to win my pawn anyway. But what I failed to understand at this point, because I had nine minutes, was actually, I just need to let him not take the pawn. So I can actually play rookie two. And this is not scary because then I play f4, which I did not, I, I did not get that difference. The difference being he commits a pawn, weakens his king, tries to play for a win, and that's when I uno reverse him. It's still equal. Now, at this point, after I play f4 myself, I thought, okay, he's going to play queen h4, because that way he, you know, maintains access down here. I thought queen h4 is sensible. I was considering sacrificing the bishop, like I was, you know, I, I would have had to enter panic mode. I also thought about just playing something like this, but the, he's just up a pawn. I mean, the reality is, he's just up a pawn. So I would have maybe, I mean, I can't even play rook h2. Now... He absolutely should have put his queen on h4. What I think he missed was that if he goes here, I have one and only one move. I don't chase him. I think he calculated this and then queen h4, and that is good. But I actually here pound bishop f3. And I realized, despite being a pawn down, I'm completely safe, and he doesn't have any way to advance because he's actually pinned. So I was feeling okay here. I figured... Queen h3 was an inaccuracy. I didn't know what to do on queen h4, I gotta tell you. And if he had found that detail, he would have been playing for a win. But probably now the game is heading for a draw. Um, but then at this point, I realized something. When he went queen h4 and I went rook h2, I had a huge brain blast. We're gonna repeat moves, right? Like, I'm a pawn down, right? So bishop f3, queen h4, rook h2, and... I realized something. I realized... He's gonna lose. What am I talking? What? <laughs> How? What am I saying? <laughs> huh? I was literally just sitting there waiting him, you know, for him to put the queen on the right square and win. Well, I realized he was going to now mentally battle the fact that it's gonna be a draw. You see, he's a pawn up. It's been a very complex game. He doesn't wanna take the cop out. He doesn't wanna be like, oh, I'm drawing a higher rated player. So I'm gonna, of course, take the draw. So, he played queen g3, but he spent half his time. He did have this, which was a fascinating move. And the point is, you would think I'm trying to go for this, right? But actually, he has king e7, and I might lose my freaking queen. I mean, this position was so absurd. But even better, if he played queen f6, I was going to play e4. And if he takes my second pawn, here comes my bishop out of nowhere from the top rope WWE style. So I, I had a lot of tricks in the position and he ultimately went for queen g3 and this move spooked him. I knew it. Because like, how's the guy who's down a pawn supposed to play for a win? Well, I'll tell you how. I have this really powerful center and he just can't break through it and I'm threatening to take. Now... What's fascinating about this position is I'm only threatening to take at the right moment. So I had a feeling here he was going to panic. Why? He can't move his knight. If he moves his knight back, I trap his queen. If he moves his knight forward, I trap his queen. If he moves his knight this way, I also trap his queen. So the crazy thing is, he just went from being like, oh, we're probably going to draw to, oh my god, I'm going to lose. Like, he realized I'm threatening the knight for the two pieces, which is winning. For example, like, here, 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 king e7, queen g5, and I have two bishops for the rook, which is a much better endgame and probably winning. So suddenly he's sitting there going, what? How is this possible? How did I get myself into this situation? And I knew that was going to happen when he put the queen on the wrong square. So I thought queen h4 was the best move. I had no idea what to do. I was gonna try to complicate matters. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, he put the queen on the wrong square, and suddenly I was like, I think I'm playing for a win, and he thought down to, like, 30 seconds, panicked, and, uh, tried to basically go all in on the H-file, 
but it doesn't work. Now, I did something really dumb here. I also thought down to a very low time. Uh, I wanted to take this first. And I calculated something really hilarious here. The point is that now, anytime I take, it's check. So he doesn't have any of these tricks. But I saw, <laughs> I saw this move, King F6. <laughs> I saw King F6, which is actually trying to trap my queen again. And I was like, what, what, what is this? And the crazy thing is, in this position, I was gonna go C4, which loses all of the advantage to this, this, Rook H8. I mean, this is... And that's why I thought here. Like, of course I can just take the bishop, but I thought, well, the bishop is still hanging. If I go here, you know, I'm always gonna catch the king. And I rejected it because of King F6. I was like, I don't know, and, and it is winning if I play E4 to try to play e5, and my queen is not trapped because his king uh, runs out, and then if I take, I survive. Like, and also I have maiden three. Rook h5, oh my god, I did not see this. Brutal. Oh, king f4. Bishop c1 mate. <laughs> Didn't see this. But I took the bishop, he went for counterplay, and he, this move is actually trapping my queen, almost, but I have rook h7. So he went here, and, and I actually, I, I figured the best move here was to play bishop b7, which it is the top line of the engine. And I, th and I was like, yeah, just trade the queens. Just trade the queens. Just trade the queens. You can't lose. There's still some really goofy tricks here, like he can move his knight, and then I got a dig, and then it's check, and then... But, you know, lucky for me, he just resigned here and decided not to participate in any more shenanigans. And I won. And, you know, I gotta tell you, like... <sighs> I gained, like, two rating points for this game. I worked my ass off for this game, man. And Logan should be minimum 2300 Fide. Like, he he played so well. And I'm not even saying that because, like, I'm the higher rated player, so I gotta, like, somehow give props. That's very common. Like, you know, the, the, the if two people play, one person's, like, 2500, other guy's 2300. You know, you, like, give props to the other person if you win. You No, Logan basically outplayed me completely. And, uh, not completely, but, like, for certain key moments, clearly has a really good understanding of this opening. Like, uh, and, you know, I should have probably gone for the E4 plan. I also kind of had an understanding, but I thought, okay, let's just play our prep. He found a move, which is, like, pretty good. And, I, you know, I was putting some pressure on him. He defended. I didn't fully understand how to capitalize on the position. And uh, he outplayed me down the stretch. Ultimately, I thought I did a nice job fighting back with, uh, you know, giving up the pawn and my rooks. And then I ended up winning. But uh, no easy games, man. I mean, really no easy games. And uh, 2130 or, or not, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a battle out here every game. But I have two out of two. I, you know, I'm not thrilled it was so difficult, but what am I, you know... It's part of the journey, part of the learning. Uh, I literally left a game like this and just thought like, I don't even know what I could have done better because the position was a bit too obscure for me to understand. So two out of two, next game I'm playing Grandmaster Maxim Novik. At the time of recording this video, that game is done. Uh, but uh, you know, real chads watch the Gotham recaps, whether I'm playing, whether anybody's playing, Magnus, Hans, Hikaru, anybody. All right, so I appreciate you all very much. And in eight hours, nine hours after I get some sleep, I will record that one as well. So I'm up like five rating points thus far. Nothing special on the grind. I'll see you for round number three. Get out of here.